All right. So this week we are talking about the A24 film, Krisha. Where have you been? What have you been doing? I have tried to become a better human being. There's a lot you missed. But you've got a lot of fixing to do. Are you mad at me? Mm-mm. For sure? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to be close to you and make up for lost time. I have stayed away while I was healing myself. You are a lever. You are heartbreak incarnate. If you think you can just pop in and pop out of people's lives like this, you are malinformed. You don't know who I am. You don't know anything about what I'm here trying to do. What's going on with you? Which I totally hate, Spina. I'm not going back. Grisha, no. I've earned a right Want to you? be at this table. Did you lie to me? You look at me and tell me you love me! <laughs> look over there! Mom, there's Krisha. Your daughter. Her name is Krisha. Her yeah. name is Krisha. That's your daughter. That's Krisha. Hey, Edward Schultz. Yeah, I have never heard of him before. This. I hadn't him either, but okay. It sounded like you knew props him. to him. No, I just mean like I, I'll give him props over a twenty four. Yep, for sure. Good, good call on that one. But this, this was Jesse's pick. This was a uh, uh, what was it related to the previous episode of Inside? Because what do you say, Bo Burnham recommended this, this one or what? Yeah, and a, a lot of like post eighth grade interviews and stuff. He had brought up this film as, um. Like he loved this film. It was like a big inspiration to him, especially because like Trey Edward Schultz was 26, I think, when he shot this. Wow. It was done on a thirty thousand dollar budget. Like most of the actors are his family. That's you know, crazy. like he like was kind of was saying how like he just loved that it was like this kid like cashing the check the internet wrote that no one, you know, did and like just made this piece of art, like just like went and did it, you know. Yeah. Um, I can respect that. So he like loved a lot. So figured might as well coming off last week, choose that for the episode. Yeah. So let's get an initial thoughts then. Jesse, you want to go into it since this is your pick? Because none of us have seen this before. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So initial, I liked it a lot. It definitely was uh, going into, I do, I, I have a thing where like when movies are really long and I feel like they're getting longer and longer, I'm like, I hate going into a movie being like, oh, it's two and a half hours. You know, this is like an hour and like 21 minutes or something. Perfect. You know, and I was like, oh, perfect. Going to love this. Um, I thought it was really good. Well, one, the thing that really stood out, well, start out with how long the first shot I was. Gonna was. Say. I'm watching it and I was like, oh, this is going to be like a one take. We love a one take. Like, you're just nailing. I just kept waiting for it to cut. And it was so long. Um, also, credit you know, again more props to the acting, yeah. But uh, and like the timing of all that. But um, it was really good. It definitely was like indie film vibes, and like, which was I kind of liked about it is like it wasn't trying to be a Hollywood movie, if that makes sense. Like, I I don't want to call it a student film because I feel like that has like a negative, dude. As in me being like it's not as good, but it it was like. I want to say it like that, but as if like it was the best student film ever made. You know, I, like, I literally wrote down it's a well done student film. Yeah, like if a student had presented this, like it, it got that advice for some reason, but not because it was like 
I feel like a lot of times people say that as in like, it wasn't, it's not like the big leagues, you know, like, but mm -hmm. it was just something about it, but it was the, yeah, the best student film ever made. But like, I loved even like the, like the score to it, the music. I like already could picture like some of your friends or like Glenn or someone like, do it was just like kind of strange and like very like not right. electronic, but you know, that like yeah, yeah, yeah. unsettling. And it was like, everything was just so different and a lot of the shots and like, so <laughs> really good. Uh, I am curious. I think he, this was a short he made before oh, he turned it okay. into a feature. And it feels like not to, say anything about the movie but it feels like it could be an amazing short yes you know yeah but that's let's hear yeah. your thoughts before i yeah joe have too what, much more. what were your thoughts joe so yeah i really liked this movie i found um i found it made me feel really anxious and i think a lot of that came from kind of that student filmy vibe of like, like I feel like it just relied very heavily on this very like anxious music, um, particularly around just like how chaotic that house was. And so, yeah, in the, initially it just made me feel really anxious. There were little things that like I was looking at that I'm like, that's gotta be something, right? Like when, when she, I, I don't really know what was going on with her finger, but I'm like, she keeps cooking a turkey. And I'm just waiting for her to chop up her finger or something, you know? Or oh, she's um, cutting the vegetables. At but yeah, ex yeah, exactly. I'm just like, something's gonna happen here, you know? Um, but oddly, I I found this really sad <laughs> in that because like, I yeah. it, it was it was really good, really well done, but like, and, and this kind of reminded me a lot of Inside. So like very much related. I'm glad we're doing this right after Inside is like in a way in the beginning before you know she's like an alcoholic in a lot of her, her history. Uh, she's probably the only one in that house who's trying to actually put effort into like real world relationship building. Like when I, I didn't know the relationship between her and this, this guy until later on, but who turns out to be her son um and she's trying to have a relationship with him and he won't he won't even give her the light of day and like that's just like to me that's just like oh that, that's just really sad you know mm. um but again i've said this a million times on this podcast if it makes you feel something it's done its job and so i felt really awkward and anxious and sad and that's a lot out of you know what is like kind of like an indie film you know so mm. i I really liked it, um, even though it didn't always make me feel super bubbly inside. Right. Know? Yeah, for me, I really liked this as well. Um, like Jesse said, that one take, that made me, that was like, that got me immediately. I was like, I have no idea what to expect. I didn't read about it and watch any trailers. But when I, and you can always tell when it's going to be one of those long takes, because it's not, you could tell it's on like a, you know, a stabilizer. But it's, oh, it's so good. I love that opening take. And uh, you really become her I feel like you you're it's like almost like a character study of her and I really want to know how much of this is like a true story via the I don't know if the same direct if the guy who directed it wrote it as well but it feels he, very human like a human it feels very personal yeah he did and he, I think he said it was based off of their family which a lot of them are in it like Krisha I think is his grandma in real life oh wow she was great um, she's related yeah well that's what i was too i was like was his family into acting because they nailed it you know like for some I, I do have actors, a few problems with them but we okay we'll to get that. to those later man <laughs> um but i i was just gonna say i think he did mention that it was based on something that their family went through with a cousin okay so it was like based off of a real event through their family but yeah. not exactly you know but like a similar situation right okay that makes sense but yeah i think overall I, I liked it a lot and uh i really like these types of mumblecore films where it's like it doesn't feel scripted like you were saying not hollywood or blockbuster and it's you know relying on the story and the dialogue more than the visuals or you know whatever you're trying to do but i kind of like them because it's different it's like a different vibe than you usually get from movies um there's a lot of films like that like i know mark duplass makes movies like this and um mm -hmm. yeah I just like it. It's like a good change of pace and they're always short like this, which is kind of nice. And it's kind of like, you're just like a fly on the wall. That's kind of how I feel during these types of movies, which is kind of the point I feel like. Cause they're just like slices of life where they right. don't necessarily like 
have an arc and resolve per se. Exactly. It's kind of just like, here's this chunk of this event, you know, very true. Right. You know. And I, I did love the, I like how they, the editing and the music, because it did kind of make it different than like other mumblecore type movies. Cause it was like, it, I don't know. It kind of like, it was almost like a combo because like, I feel like those type of movies just kind of like play out. There's no creative editing or anything, but this was like purposely cut. And I think, I feel like they just shot a bunch of B-roll, like the dogs walking. I feel like they just shot a bunch and we're like, okay, we'll have fun with this in post. But what if what's to get into some hot takes, what was your the acting? I, okay. The mom, what was her name? Uh, like her sister. Yeah. Her sister, sister. The, own the house. Uh, yeah. The end where she was crying. I did not buy that mm-hmm. at all. Um, and then the boys, I wasn't a fan of the guys. They just seemed like film, like uh, film school students. Well, okay. Well, also, which one? You know, the her the kid who ended up being her son. Yeah, I didn't like is that. he's the direct. That's Trey Edward Schultz. That's Uh-oh. who made the movie. Stick to directing, bud. It's a take. <laughs> uh, takes. I did think he. That's cool, it, I kind of thought that through most of the film, mm-hmm. you know. But then when you find out at the end, it's her, her like son. You know, and she kind of just abandoned him. Suddenly, I was just like, oh, I think maybe he did bad or maybe he nailed it. Like, maybe he just played checked out so well. You know, like, completely just, like, so checked out and, like, didn't even, like, try to force it. I don't know. He was one of of those things. He was, I I liked him better than the other two guys. The other two guys felt forced. Like, the porn scene, to me, was weird. I don't. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that was strange. Okay, that just feels weird. Like, they're a little too old to be watching and enjoying it together. (laughs) <laughs> they're just hanging out they're just are, no, are they brothers or cousins or what's i don't know i don't i don't think it matters that the matter. thing that i thought was funny with with the like the boys of the family is like when Prisha first came over they're like oh no like i have a beard now and like oh you know look at you now or whatever and when the grandma came over later on it was the exact same thing and I was like, this actually is mm. fairly accurate. Where everyone's like, right. oh, oh, look how big you are now. And you're right. Like, you're like grown men, you know? It's like. The dialogue was very well done in that way, where it is real. It feels like you're literally there in like a random room. Like, you yeah. See- it felt like a family, too. Yes. I mean, which again, a lot of them, I think, were his family, but like they nailed the family dynamic in a way that like I feel like a lot of like Hollywood movies, like surprisingly, don't write families cr- like siblings are like i feel like they have to they try overselling in movies a lot you know so it becomes like that's not how i would talk to my brother or sister you know like because they're like selling they're like hey what up bro we hung we grew up together man right (laughs) you know but like this just really nailed just like you got it right away yep can i I ask y'all what your favorite scene was yeah the opening i think like I still, I, yeah i think just because it's set up it just yeah i was like joe was saying where I, I because of it started like that i was like so into it because i was like yep and i'm like waiting for it to cut and then i'm like wait did it cut already you know like because i didn't pay attention right away uh that there was also i kind of liked the shot i think early on when she was staring out of the r- glass in the room and it was zooming out from below the stairs yes. and the real the me- really unsettling like weird music and i just was like oh this is such that's another like i was like oh i think joe b will like this just because it's like it made you feel like it was going to turn into a horror yes you know that, like that, that reminded that me of scene. hereditary yes yeah mm-hmm. very much so yeah. i mean i got i wrote down this is very a24 in all caps very uh-huh. indie like it just it's the shot i think they just I think the fun part about this movie is like they, you know, so they could, they were probably just trying to do, they probably shot some of those shots in like 10 different ways and angles, which is good. And they probably just went with the best one, but yeah, I agree. And that's, yeah. The, I think the opening scene for me is also my favorite. I love the end, how they cut that together. I thought that was really clever. Um, but I, I, yeah, one take, I'm a sucker for one take. I know you two are Jesse, but I mean, Halloween, man, one take open. Well, technically there's a couple cuts, but it's meant to be like an all one take. And I don't know. I just, it gets me every time. So I don't know. Oh, also, I didn't like the dad. Wasn't a fan. Which one? 
the di- the guy who hated dogs. Yeah. That was interesting. That would actually pretty. I, I would consider that one of the more in, like I don't I don't think he's a particularly likable character, but I thought the conversation between him and Krisha was one of the more interesting ones in the movie. Now, question for you guys: What do you did, do you think this happened over one day, or was this like a couple days? Because that conversation they kept cutting. Like they started with a conversation outside, then they had a bunch of scenes, and they went back to a conversation outside. But then it was like gearing up to Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know how long it takes well, to that, all that stuff. I don't know. Well, that's what I was thinking initially uh, was when she started making the turkey, I go, it's too late in the day for this to be Thanksgiving. Like you can't, right. that turkey is not going in. Like that's not going to be done today. Mm-hmm. So I assumed it's the day before. And then Thanksgiving was the next day. Yeah, because she had a room. Well, well, yeah, but then again, it could just be. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I took it as two. I was gonna say too, though. I like like Joe was saying how it he that the I want to call him Dan. I don't know why. He just seems like a Dan. Yeah, he seems yeah, like I a Dan. Remember. I don't know. Uh, it was uh, a weird name, but yeah, it wasn't Dan. That was something. Yeah, but he he right. Like if you said guess his name, I'd say Dan. I'm gonna look it up. Um, he being like Doyle. interesting. Doyle. <laughs> uh. With it being you know, like one of the more interesting ones and talking about like the family dynamics and stuff, it was int- like I did like that, that it was weird and it was more interesting. And he was like one of the only people who was like outside the family talking to her, kind of, you know, because like it's true. he also was like an outsider, like she k- kind of was, but he also was kind of on the more on the inside, even though it's her relative, you know, like that weird thing. But it was just like I did like that when he was talking to her. He was talking to her like as an outsider too, being like these people, right? Like, it's a good point. It's it's almost like you got. I mean, it's a family, so it's not quite clicky, but it kind of is clicky. You know? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It's it's like Krisha's trying to. I mean, she's clearly trying to create a relationship with her son, which obviously is not it didn't go well. But like, she's almost trying to break into the group where, whereas like. It, the, every every scene in the movie, I don't think anyone's ever really alone and comfortable. Like she was the the scene where she was talking to her son, he was just like completely not about it. Right. And then this other scene where she's talking to like the dad guy, but he's just kind of like also a little bit like I'm I'm not about all that. Like, is there her dogs and I hate the dogs and you know? Yeah. I don't know. No, I very, feel that very clicky. Yeah. Now, did you guys did you guys see the aspect ratio change ratio change? Mm-mm. I no. thought that was from I thought Bo Burnham got his inspiration from this movie from that because it, it was all nineteen twenty the whole movie well I don't know nineteen twenty but it was full screen uh-huh. and then it cuts to this is like this is like later very later on the last like I can't remember maybe twenty ish minutes don't quote me on that is is in four three is a square. Really? I think it's when she was started down spiraling. That's when they that's why I think Bo Burnham got inspiration for his inside. Check it out. It's it's yeah, I, I just don't movie. know how I could have missed it. it so it's, it, crazy. it's actually perfect because it's full screen and then it cuts to like black or something. And then it she's oh it she like wakes up and it's four or three. I think she goes to sleep or something mm-hmm. and she wakes up. I don't know, but it, it was a hard cut or did the, they move in? No, no, it was a hard cut. But I, I, I mean, seeing how Bo Burnham watches this, I assume he got some sort of inspiration because this was 2016. So yeah, check it out. It's you should check it out after this. But I noticed that. Yeah. But cool. And they they say Krisha so many times the title of the movie. So that was kind of fun. That's true. Sure. <laughs> also, what kind of name is Krisha? I did. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I don't know. I did have a hard time finding this because of the short. Like, like I saw the short come up and then I saw this come up and I was like, you know, I was just like, oh, assuming we were oh interesting. Short. Although we should do shorts. I do like shorts. Yeah. But, um, that could yeah. have been a cool. I also didn't know how to spell her name. So. <laughs> yeah. I only, yeah. I always knew just because the first time I heard Bo Burnham say it, he like specifically was like, either the person asked him when he was like, it's K-R-I. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah. Mm. Kresha. What do you what do you guys think of what do you guys think about her finger? Like, what do you think happened? They don't really address it. I I mean, I'm assuming it got cut off somehow. The and I would assume that that was probably from cooking, purely based on the fact that we saw her cooking. 
in the thing. But like, I was also just waiting for her to cut her another finger off to like somehow explain the, the original finger missing. But I, I mean, it doesn't really address it. I don't think that I, I think you might be right because when, when she first started cooking, her sister was like, are you sure you want to do this or something? And she was like, I have to, or something like that. So it's important to me. Yeah. It's important to me. Exactly. So I think it, I think you're right. I think it's something cooking. Well, obviously she was addicted to things. So I, she was probably under the influence when it happened. Probably. Yeah. That seemed like that's what I took after putting it together was like, yeah. Cause it made you think she was going to cut the other one off all those shots of the vegetables. Yes. Yes. Uh, but like, I figured at some point it was like another drunk accident or something. Or, and then I was putting it together and I was like, Oh, maybe that was like the last family incident was like, it was a shit show when she came because she cut her finger off, you know, like, and was, <laughs> I did. I mean, I both like, I, there, there was a, when she was cooking the turkey and pulling the gizzards out and like the wrapping on her finger came off and kind of like, uh-huh. the and then it, it, the camera moved up onto one of the, the like sons or whatever. And he's hey. just like, Ugh. I love that. He's just <laughs> yeah. watching, like there's no talking going on. And he's just like, the whole time she's doing it. It's just like, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, yeah, it's, that's pretty nasty, but uh, you know, I don't know. You, you, you feel for her a little bit, but at the same time, you have no idea what happened to her finger. It's objectively just disgusting to drop a bandage into a turkey that you're cooking, though. Yeah, I will say though, the the thing that made me, I don't I don't know what happened, I forgot is like, but she also like it seemed like it was somewhat recent. Yes, like they hadn't seen her in forever because, and I also thought a lot of the pills were maybe like antibiotics or painkillers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I also didn't know that. I thought it was a previous like event but she hadn't been she there. put the you stuff know, so on like, it like the cream or whatever she yeah, put it on. Like, and yeah. it was still bandaged up yeah so i mean going back to what i said earlier i don't i don't, maybe that doesn't make sense i don't know i think for me <laughs> something that i i think t- i i wish they explained more was that i think i don't think i got enough explanation from the story i think by the end it was like obviously we know we found out that he, she is that kid's mom which I kind of figured, I don't know. I kind of saw that coming a little bit, but I wish they went more into like what happened. Why do they hate her so much? There, there can't, it can't just be obviously abandonment is terrible, but like, there's gotta be a, there's gonna be more to it. Like she's gotta be like, something must've happened when she was on drugs or drunk or something that really affected him. And clearly why she didn't raise him. There's gotta be some, I wish I knew just got a little more of that and explain maybe the finger and, yeah, I assume she just disappeared. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Crecia 2, man. Crecia 2. <laughs> I mean, Crecia 2. I'd actually watch lies. it. I'd get into it. If you're listening. <laughs> Trey, come on, man. Yeah, I don't know. It was very, yeah, uh, it was very That's interesting. What it's all, all hidden, man. Trey means three. So, Wait, Crecia 1, three? 2. And, well, like, Trey and, like. Oh, right, right, right. You know. Like, Ooh. Grisha trilogy. Like I always, I always thought. Random side note, I don't know if this is his name's actually Trey. When I learned that Trey, people who go by Trey were actually their name was like Joe the Third, but they go by Trey because Trey is like a nickname for Whoa. the third. So a lot of Trey's like Trey's not their name; it, they're just the third. So their nickname that they've always gone by is Trey. That is fascinating. Right. Now, weird. now every tray I meet, I'm going ask if their real name is Trey. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. We should get him on here. <laughs> it maybe would. Maybe. I mean, I mean, maybe. He made another film, I think, a year, 2019. I'd be maybe. curious. See, this makes me want to watch another one of his movies. So I, I, I'd be I, I Off don't know. script with Trey Edward Schultz. I'm about it. That would be great. Um, I also felt like the, the, I don't know his name, the other dad the i don't know if he was like a brother or the guy who was like tech illiterate yeah yeah that was a little that was seemed weird to me like it was all the stereotypes like the headphone tangle then like can't figure out a plug i'm like why is this important that didn't really make any sense i, I thought it was just kind of illustrating that the the kid Cretia's kid was like competent in this other stuff like the business whatever or just really like basic technology but he he was clearly not like super happy ab- about like like it it wasn't like something he was passionate about. He's just like yeah, you just do this, right? You no, know? 
And I, I also think because she was watching their conversation at first and like he was almost treating like his like he was his dad, I feel like, because, you know, they hugged at the end and everything. I don't know. I think she was missing that from him. Maybe that's what that was, the scene was about. But Yeah. And there's a weird dynamic because I, yeah, I was curious like what the relationship was because it seemed like to me it, the like fumbling of headphones and the computer and how he's saying like he has all the documents that you know, he can't, and he was just saying like, he's been on a lot of financial stress. So, you know, like whatever he was, it seems like he's not really adapting to this, whatever is going on. And he's like all, all over the place, fumbling and like the, the phone even. Right. Uh, and then he just like asks this kid who's in business school, like currently, but he's like, you financially doing okay. You know, like ask, you know, he's like, I'm been financially really stressed. Are you doing okay? And I'm like, I just so curious what that relationship is. Cause that's such a strange conversation on a family or like way to portray it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like it just, yeah. I took that as him. Betray. Just... Betray. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Betray. Sure. Betray. <laughs> Go for it, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, that, that's really all I had. It's just, I, I took that as like, he was so uncomfortable that like, you know, like sometimes if you're super uncomfortable, you say things that kind of don't really make sense. I, I, I totally. kind of took it as that, like, like, oh, I feel so stressed. Like, what, what about you? You know, like, right. almost as if uh-huh. but like, you just don't know how to deal with it. I wonder. Yeah, if I just the... thought the financial part specifically was like a strange. Yeah, that's so different in different families. I know, like the norms, right. but to be like to like someone who's like under, be like, I'm in a lot of financial stress. Are you financially doing okay? Right. Like, what? Like, if that was like your dad, you know, like yeah. I don't know. I wonder if the the whole film school comment was like about Trey actually because like I feel like that's a random like I mean going to films personally like I feel like I feel like that just wouldn't be a random thing you'd put in there like I'm sure he had some like I wonder if he was like his parents wanted him to go to business school or something and he went to film school or he went to business school and he actually became a filmmaker I wonder if there was some personal connection to uh-huh. the actual character yeah if he went because yeah, I I think that did that made sense to me i think at the end too especially when she was like right. you're my son and she kind of was like you could tell she had a lot of hidden hate for the family who raised him her sister because she's like uh you turned him into one of you guys like a boring you know yes. and like so yes. like he was my kid and like i wanted him to be like this artist and he had all these like creativity and then you guys took him and he went to business school you know like you turned him into right this. and i feel like there's this lot of like seated like hatred yeah there or something that's a good point i don't know i go i would be to... curious if he went to film school just with making this movie too i know honestly um going back to Gatalum. Gatalum, maybe um, i would be curious to see because joe you mentioned hereditary and i got that vibe for sure and it, you know it was definitely getting more horror horrifying it was up you know it was leading up to that and more suspenseful and i was waiting for something crazy to happen because a24 can do that they can pull it out so i was like is she this is where my this is where my mind goes. Don't judge me on this. So I had a couple things. I, I first I thought she was going to kill everybody at the end. I don't know why. I'll go yeah, real psycho. Yeah. Or wake up or like I don't know. Maybe this all didn't happen and it was like kind of in her head, but like she was in like a rehab facility. I don't know. Something like that. And then I had another thought. Uh going if you haven't seen I can't remember the, name, the exact name, but it's something with the Johnsons or something wrong with the Johnsons. Ari Aster's short film. If you haven't seen that, if you, yeah. something's up with the Johnsons or something like that, I can't remember the name of it. Great what short you film. Me? It's very, very weird. It's <laughs> incestual. For I'll say that. I, I so I was like, this is hereditary vibe. A twenty four. I thought maybe Chris Show was like hooking up with with that kid or gonna try to hook up with that kid or something. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. She's, I mean, they, they're weird together. Maybe something happened in the past. Like, I think of like, you know, Perks being a wallflower, like deep subject. But that kid was like, you know, essentially sexually abused by his aunt. And I was like, it wouldn't be the first time that this could put in a movie. And I was like, that would be a very interesting twist. I thought she was hallucinating. At, the at least end. some of it. At the end. end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end, yeah, I was curious. I thought it was going to go into one of those things where, yeah, you didn't know what was real and what was not that you'd watched kind of deal where you end and like, that's the question. Right. And which is kind of what, how I felt. I mean, I, I do wish there was a little more resolution. Um, I mean, yes and no. I just want to know a little more about this backstory, but 
again, I don't know if it's important. We just kind of, I feel like the whole movie is basically to feel her emotions and kind of sympathize with her and kind of hope that this connection works out. But I don't know if it ever does. I want a prequel. Keisha Origins. <laughs> Keisha Origins. All of a sudden, it's a trilogy. <laughs> that would be so funny. Um, he did make two. He made uh, It Comes at Night in 2017 oh, and Waves that. in 2019. He made It Comes at Night. Great movie. Yeah, that's him. Wow. All right. Makes sense. So I Maybe a few one. more to watch. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the other one, but that sounds great to me. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So we don't really have any locations for this, I don't think, because uh, it's just it, the house. Do we know where the house is? That's true. I assume. It, I don't it's know. in Texas. Texas. I want to say it was. Uh, mm. Yeah, no, it's definitely Texas. Um, I'm glad you looked this up because I didn't. Um, he was born in Montgomery. Montgomery, Texas, like Houston area, I think. So maybe Houston area. Any Houston people out there, if you can uh, find this. I mean, I might be able to go on Google Maps and find out. I mean, it's also, to keep in mind, it's probably his family's house. That's true. That would make sense. Um, we'll there. That would actually be kind of cool, a screening at the house. Um, I don't know. Maybe we get in touch I'm with sure Trey Schultz, it. man. I'm gonna, I'm sure I'll see. I'll see. I'll hit him up. I'll see if I can find him. Yeah. Trey's on yeah. social. Uh, Krisha was his aunt, Krisha Fairchild. Oh, that's crazy. She was great. She was really yeah, good. so good. Impressed. Um, do you guys want to get um, a ratings then, or is there anything else you want to talk yeah. about? Yeah, no, good. I'm into. Yeah, this it says. Well, one, it was at premiered at South by Southwest in March 2015, oh, gotcha. winning the Grand Jury Award. It's based upon a real life incident involving Schultz's cousin who experienced a relapse at a family reunion. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, you could definitely tell it's personal for sure. I was like, this is not just made yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, the family nailed it. Um, All right. Cool. You want to, who else to go first? Joe, mm-hmm. you want to go kick mm-hmm. it off? Sure. Um, I will. My, I, I was telling uh, Jesse about this, but like my ratings are all over the place. I kind of actually regret not giving Inside a 10 last week. Um, here comes the regrets i really i really you can got change to, it man uh... you can change it now all right let's change to a 10 then all right no they're locked in man are you they give locked? this a 10 in <laughs> so you don't regret it next week um for for this one i think i'm gonna give it a seven nine not Ooh. because i didn't love it i think the ceiling for this probably was an eight for me which means you know like it, it, i thought it was very well done like I said, it made me feel all sorts of things, which is to me like the measure of a good movie. So yep. uh, I was about it, but seven, nine, cool. seven, nine. Uh, I'll go with minutes for the extra long first shot. <laughs> <laughs> I love nine that. Minutes. <laughs> Jesse. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go nine. Um, Ooh, yeah i'm gonna go nine nine fingers nine fingers that fits fits really well um because i it you know n- not a bubbly comedy um no nope. but i really liked it for just what it was and it was like uh, i think um how to say like kind of going back to the student film aspect but not a student film i get just like indie film mm-hmm. is there something about it like you said last week with inside how you were like it just makes me want to make something like this oh sure, yeah like there was some aspect of this that was just like it's so cool that he went and did this you know and uh like it, it's a movie that makes me want to make things um definitely and it like just the whole fact that it was just like one of those slice of life movies where it didn't really resolve, but it wasn't trying to be anything else. And it was very just like what it was. And very much like I was listening to this past week that I think put it really well. It was like Mike Birbiglia talked to Aubrey Plaza about independent film. 
and they were saying how like they both really love independent film versus like bigger things because you really feel like there's a single person behind it like who's it's right. their vision yeah. and they're just like they're dedicated to putting that vision on screen and there's not all these like factors coming in to edit and make tweaks and tweak this where like the end product isn't you know a lot of times like the end product isn't actually kind of close to the starting vision right but, like a lot of times with independent film it's these like you know there's a huge team behind it but it's usually like a single like filmmaker who has this vision and they like that's the that's the core you know like that's yeah. kind of the most important thing they don't let other things um kind of like prior get prioritized over that mm -hmm. um so it was just like a very cool piece of art you know like real art from this person that you know like joe said too made you feel things mm -hmm. and it very much feel like he made this piece of art that you connect with and you felt things and you didn't feel like you were watching like an entertaining movie right uh so i'm just maybe too i'm in that state of mind coming off a of bow where i'm like in that like artsy you know like i always love independent film and like that style too you know and like even like wes anderson you like not that this was wes anderson you know but like that style um but yeah so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go bold nine Nice. nice fingers great man i'm bouncing between ratings now because i had an initial rating and now Daphne always Daphne bounce Daphne. around by the end because <laughs> i really okay i really i really liked the movie like i'm really happy we watched this i wasn't happy after i watched it but i was happy that i did watch it uh i the one the, the one take in the beginning was already made it like five points that's like five right there uh it was actually made it like six or seven points but uh um loved it i love like i basically agree with everything you guys said and jesse like you were saying about like art it made it also made me want to uh, be creative as well uh I, and that's why i feel like indie does and that's what i love about a24 is that they let people make what the movies they want to make and which i i think that's why they're so successful it's because they're not interrupting and you know ever all of their movies are so you, you can like you know hereditary is so ari aster like it just describes him and like this movie is very much Trey. Like, it, I mean, I don't know much of his work, but um, it just feels like him. And I love that he used his family. I love that he used the house. I think that's great. Being creative with the budget and everything and super impressive with that. And uh, yeah, I think the editing was creative. I mean, you can only do so much with the story and the script with editing. So I, I applaud them for doing that and trying to be creative. Um, I'm going to go seven, five, I think, because I, I really liked it a lot. And, but I don't think the ceiling is as high as I, for me, as it is other movies. Um, and uh, Jojo asked me, cause I, on the plane, I watched this and she's like, Oh, like, how was it? And I was like, Oh, it was great, but I don't think I'd watch it again. But now I kind of want to watch it again with Jojo because I really want to hear other people's perspective on it. I think it's a, a fun movie to hear what people think about it. So I agree. But yeah. I'm going to go eight. Bump I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to bump it up. Eight, eight turkeys. Eight turkeys. Eight turkeys. All eight right, eight turkeys. All right. Eight turkeys. I, I have with one. my ratings was going to say that I feel like this going into it now, I try not to before I would try to think about the rating before and then I'd bounce around a lot in the episode. Yes. So I would always like I'd always like center around kind of a middle thing because I'd be bouncing around and had a thought and now I'm going to try a new technique where I try very much not to think of a rating until the very end. And then whatever that feeling is, go bold into that. You know, like I yeah. didn't think I was going to rate this a nine, but then through this, I was just like, I'm getting a good feeling. You yeah. know, like I, I did like this. So we're trying to switch up, switch up the rating, see how crazy this gets. Yeah. I always try to think about ratings like during the, I, I try not to think about it at all while I'm watching it or after, but I don't know. We'll see if that changes or not, but yeah, great movie. Great pick, solid pick. Segway, egg 24 new rumors that apple might buy a 24 uh don't thoughts i don't know if i don't know enough but it, again i think unless there's been more rumors rumored and hopefully it would be one of those things where apple buys them and lets them operate I independently know. that's my concern um, but you I, I feel like it could very much become just like the apple tv production company you know I, and we could like maybe lose a 24 a little just a little bit i feel like Not fully but i i had mixed feelings because the morning show that was apple tv right the morning show 
Yeah. That They've was fantastic. done good stuff. Great stuff. They... I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried about it. I'm a little concerned about it. I, I want them to stick to who they are. I think that's what makes them so per, uh, productive and uh, successful. I mean, everyone wants to work with A24. It's like a, that's what I, that's what I'm curious about. It is like Apple has done a really great job with like, um, Ted Lasso, The Morning Show. Yeah, I didn't exactly. watch, but like Defending Jacob with like Brian Cranston, I think was big. Uh, like they've had, there's that new one with Keegan Michael Key and Cecily Strong, Mythic Quest. Like they, they've actually been doing surprisingly out the gate, really good job. But it, they, they're almost developing a style of their own. Yes. Like you can almost feel when it's an Apple TV show now if you watch enough of them. And I wouldn't want A24 to be slowly into that style, you know, like because we won't get these types of movies. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. We'll this, is type, this is the type of movie I want to see because like you don't you're not gonna go to you're not gonna go to like this isn't gonna premiere at a, like the biggest movie theater. Like I want to see this on like an indie screen at like a festival, like, like exactly what you know premiered at South by. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't want to lose that. And that's why I'm, I'm glad that people still make these movies. And I just cause like and like A24, I think they also love that people make these types of movies. So I think it's I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I don't know There's what she's she, There'd be really cool if he uh, did a, maybe this also exists. And I was going to say, we should see if he, A24 has a podcast. They know that they have people, they do. it's just guests, but like, I'm curious if he actually was on it at some point and I just never knew, you know, like his name didn't ring a bell, but it'd be really cool if there was someone like this who really broke down like super granular, how they used like, how to raise 30k and then how to use that to shoot this movie you know because like yes. again like with Bo Brennan saying like he cashed the check that you know the internet wrote it's like there are ways to do this when we like renting gear i'm like i'm curious what yeah. you know all that process is but i'm just like it'd be so interesting to see if it unlocked a few people who are like in that spot where they're like oh wait i could actually i could take the jump and do this you know yeah. like this is the playbook, you know, if that was actually written now. And I think using his family members and house, I think that uh, cut down costs like a lot, obviously, you don't have to pay the actors or anything. I'm sure he paid them a little bit, maybe here and there, but um, it was probably all equipment and all that other stuff, craft services and things you don't think about, but I don't know. I would yeah. be really curious to hear. And I, I also think like the same with like Blair Witch, like it was shot for so, so cheap, but so successful. I love when that, I love when those, when people can do that. I mean, like the the pinnacle, right? Is probably still like uh, paranormal, paranormal activity. activity. Yeah, that was like ten thousand or thirteen thousand dollars or something, and made and made millions. <laughs> like revitalized the found footage genre. Yeah, it was crazy, insane. But we'll segue to that. Actually, I went to the Blair Witch, acti- Blair Witch oh. locations. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing a paranormal activity. But I went to the Blair Witch locations this past weekend, or just one, the cemetery, because they were kind of scattered and we didn't have time. But it was great. It was a really cool town, actually, Burkittsville. It's uh, it was great. The some of the cemetery, all the gravestones, and everything are exactly how that was in the movie back in the nineties or early two thousand, but uh, nineteen ninety nine, I think it was. But yeah, it was great. Yeah, I don't know. That's about it for me. Right. Into it. I'm trying to think of any other. Oh, I mean, we I can announce this here, but we started our off script uh, segments, which is where we talk to uh, other location hunters and or filmmakers or anyone i guess into movies i don't talk to anybody so anyone you'll see it to... in the same feed just different same title, feed, right? different playlists on youtube as well called off script obviously but yeah that's about it we'd love to get filmmakers on check here. it in so i'm trying to do that yeah we got you know do the push that we never do of like if you like it leave a review if you're a filmmaker reach out <laughs> exactly be our friend come um, on hang out with us We're, come on come on uh oh i had one other oh well not really movie news too but i'm i always forget you know i'm a big tv person over movies like and uh i always forget i mean with movies too but how quiet the summer gets you know like everyone takes the summer off so like yes, yes. everything goes off air you know like there's just like nothing new but i'm like so ready for like all the shows to like new season like the new ted lasso is coming out yep, yep. in a week or two that'll be my good. favorite series ever succession on hbo season three is finally coming out this fall mm-hmm. at some point like all the morning shows a new season coming out uh 
you know, some I'm geared I'm pumped Stranger for things. the end of the summer. Ooh. Stranger Things season four is coming out this year. So that'll be good. Interesting. I didn't even know they were doing a season four. Oh, dude, they're gonna yeah. or maybe it was a while ago and I just They're gonna be so old. It's gonna be so weird. It is yeah. it's so yeah, it's so weird watching stuff like that because I for, you know, I for like get that they're actually just actors who are growing up. Right. I mean, it's like, like Harry I Potter. just watched it that not that long ago and they were just yeah. little kids, but like four years when you're a kid is, you know, 12 I mean, to 16. Yeah. Big, big jump. It's just like, it's just like Harry Potter for us though. Cause like, you know, they all grew up oh, in yeah. front of our eyes as we watched all the movies. That was cool though. Cause they also like grew up kind of like with, you know, like our yeah. age. Right. So they almost, it almost felt like they weren't growing up because we were like, you know, like at, you're growing up the same page. So you're like, oh, yeah, whenever I watch it, it feels like they're my age. Right, exactly. So it's yeah. like a weird, you know. Right. I I will say, too, I heard I've not watched Space Jam 2. I know we've talked about it no. coming up. Heard some bad reviews. <laughs> we, we actually watched that. And um, so, yeah, this has given me two perfect segues to some of the things I want to talk about. But the, <laughs> the two Teed movies that uh, I watched this week, uh, one, speaking of Stranger Things, David Harbour played um, the Red Guardian in uh, Black Widow. In Black Widow. How was that? It was so funny to me. He was such a goofy, goofy character. And I loved, I, that was probably my favorite part about the whole movie. I, I thought that movie was well done. Um, it was fun to watch. It's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, okay. But it, we went to the theaters to see it. And it was super fun because, you know, we haven't been doing a whole lot of that going to the theaters lately. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that was super enjoyable. David Harbour was my favorite part of that. And then we did watch Space Jam 2 as well, which I heard is actually like beating Black Widow at the box office. I could see that. But Ooh. like, I mean, goes without saying, but like <laughs> the original Space Jam, I think is better. This is this is fun, funny but like, I'm not gonna say this is a good movie. It's, no. it's, uh, yeah. it, it, I was curious if they, I think I said this on uh, a few weeks ago, but I am curious. I was curious if they were gonna do it like different than the original Space Jam or basically do the same thing just with LeBron instead of MJ. And it was, it was different. I mean, it's, the general plot is the same, but like there, there were slightly different motivations and like it was done up in a way that was really, really corny, if you mm. ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like kind of entering yeah. a real bad era of corny movies for the last few years that are like sequels from like the nineties or something like it's always like I don't know. It was funny. To... It was funny, and they incorporated like they they went outside of just Looney Tunes. They did all of Warner Media basically. So like okay. there was cameos from like DC characters. Um, the, That's the clown, cool. Or uh, uh, Pennywise from It was in it. Like, oh, that's cool. It was like, it, it was all over the place. <laughs> yeah. The first review I heard of it was from someone I know who was like, it was basically a giant Warner Brothers c commercial with some mm -hmm. LeBron appearances. <laughs> that's probably, I, like, I mean, basically what they made, probably, I'm sure, on purpose. But, yeah. but I mean, like, it, like if, if you're just looking for something to laugh at, like, I laughed at this movie, but like, it was, it was, there was also a lot of like cringy laughs. Uh, yeah. You know? Oh, good to know. I, I still need to watch the new Mighty Ducks series. So do I. Because yeah. I'm a little terrified, but I also I know. have some hope. So I don't know. A little hope, at least. But I did watch, Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it from, I think it's the 90s. It was a Nick Cage, John Travolta movie called Face Off. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. I feel like that's come up at trivia night before. It's like a, it's like a cla like it, the classic cheesiest action movie ever. Like, yeah, there you. I'm gonna put it in this episode, but it is literally, you gotta watch it, Joe. You would love this just because Nick Cage. But it's there's a scene where he's in the beginning and he's dressed as like a priest, and he's like he's like the bad guy. He's like a drug dealer, and he's like. He like sing, he like joins his choir and he's just like singing hallelujah really ridiculously and he like grabs this girl's ass. It's so funny. You want you need to watch you it. You think I would love that? Because it's funny. <laughs> because it's it's literally so like out of the, like it's ridiculous. I don't know how they thought that was like good.
enjoy the Maasai. In fact, I think it's fucking boring. But your voice makes even a hack like Handel seem like a genius. You're just going to cut the whole movie into this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Like a three-hour episode. We're like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, we have to watch Face Off. But interesting movie. I mean, I'm glad I watched it because it's apparently it's I don't know. It's a classic, classic movie. Yeah, I've definitely heard it referenced a lot. It's yeah. just randomly come up. Yep. But I think that's all the, the things you learn movie. from trivia. Richard Gere randomly came up the other day and I said, Did you know his middle name was Tiffany? Because I learned that at trivia night. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, I think I, I don't know anything else. I've really been watching anything else new. Um, the only news I would bring up is I have heard that um, Daniel Craig's version of James Bond, like they're going to do like one more, mm. um, and then that's that's going to be it for his version of uh, Bond. All right, interesting. I love Daniel Craig. Yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. I yeah, want, I like I want, him a lot. Uh, well, he he was supposed to be over before this, the one that's coming out. That was he wasn't even supposed to do yeah. that one, but then he like signed on for it because I think he liked the character. Yeah, he like is my D- James Bond. Yeah, he's just because I think of him because like his movies were coming out kind of when we were growing up. So like I think he's like the one I think of. Him and Sean Connery to me are like I, I love Sean Connery, but it's yeah I agree. It's Daniel Craig so good. He's definitely one of my top. Um, oh they. They did release Blumhouse is doing a um, Exorcist movie. I don't know if it's a prequel, a sequel, or a remake, and I, everyone's very concerned about it. I mean, I love Blumhouse, and they did a great job on Halloween. And if it if it's similar to Halloween, I will be happy with that. But the Exorcist is, in my opinion, is like almost. I think it's like a perfect movie. So I don't want them to mess that up. But we'll see what happens. Be good for our hot takes, probably though. What? If they make the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm trying to think. The only thing I think that's come out to that, just to randomly mention, is the uh, I Think You Should Leave season two came out on Netflix. If you haven't. Which one's that? That's the one I showed you after yes, Bo Burnham, yes, where it's yes, just like yes. absurdist sketches. And some of the sketches <laughs> are just like, I don't know what's going on. And some you're like dying laughing because you don't know what's going on. Right. Uh, but season two came out, so it's worth a. All right. if you're looking for some real goofy and silly to watch. <laughs> throw that on. I could get into that. Oh, uh, uh, JoJo showed me Queen's Gambit. Um, oh, that was good. You I got that? two episodes in, and I was like, ah. I really did not like the first episode. I do not like flashback episodes. Well, I don't mind if they're flat. Mm-hmm. I don't mind if they start with it, but there was no reason to put that opening scene where she's an adult and then cut back to the kids for the whole episode. They got to just start with the kid. You don't need that for no. Time. You it's you, you'll get already, it if you finish the I've season seen, though. I've seen bits and pieces, and I've seen that scene come back, and like I, I don't know. I I don't. I think it's. I don't know. Again, I'm not a TV person as much as some people, so I I really like Anya Taylor Joy. I think she's incredible. I think she's a great actress, and it is a well written show. I don't know. I just I'm not into it as much. I kind of want to give it another shot though. Yeah, I didn't like, I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as like the hype it was getting. Like people I think it was were too hyped. Up. Everyone's like, this is the best I show it. I've seen in years. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was cool. good, but it wasn't, to me, it wasn't. Yeah. Like people were like, this is, uh, yeah, the best. I mean, did I download the chess app and play like Puzzle Rush for a week? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It was a blast. It does make me want to play chess. So I will say that. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And Dudley's in it, so that's always fun to to see. From Harry Potter, he's the he's the mm-hmm. other guy. The I don't know his name, but he got really scared. Yeah. But, oh yeah, his yeah. eyes are like this close together. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, Queen's Gambit. It. All right, well I think that's a wrap. Awesome. Let's see if I can get this to work. Prisha, Prisha. Whoa. Whoa.